It has a hardened, cracked black exterior, and the interior is a little softer and has like a rusty yellow-brown color. Um, it's really visible when it's removed from the tree and broken into chunks. It's really um, hard to mistake once you get to know what you're looking for, but there are small um, similarities to chaga and like maybe a knot in the tree or just a burl. Um, typically, chaga is found on birch trees that are over 40 years old, but it can be found on um, younger trees. It usually takes about three to five years for the chaga to be harvested on these older trees. Um, it's best to try to get chaga during the winter months. Um, that's the best time to be getting your chaga. Chaga grows wild in birch forests of Russia, Korea, Eastern and Northern Europe, and Northern areas of the United States, including good old Minnesota and also Canada. Um, it should only be harvested from living trees and great care should be taken not to damage the tree. You always wanna leave a little bit of the chaga left on the tree so you don't damage the tree. Once you've got your chaga cut off the tree, you'll wanna take it and remove some of the black and cut it into chunks. You don't have to remove all of the black. The black part actually has the most nutrient dense part of the chaga. If you choose to remove it, that's fine. Um, cut it into one inch chunks and then you're going to dehydrate it overnight at 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The chaga will begin to crack. That's when you know it is dried. You can pick it up and some of them you'll actually be able to break in half and you'll know that it's completely dry. Then um, once you've got it dry, you can um, put it into your stone grinder and begin to break it into smaller chunks. Take the chunks that don't seem to want to grind quite how you want and drop them into your um, electric uh, grinder that maybe you would use for coffee or milling. There's also attachments you can use on your food processor that can be used to make your chaga a little more fine and you want your chaga the more finely powdered your chaga is in my experience it leaves a little bit of a chalky taste in the chaga so i like i'm going to try with these bigger chunks this time some people don't even grind it up at all and just use the cubes and then they steep it for much longer when you do it this way and you're using the ground uh, coffee ground a little bit bigger than coffee grounds you want to use spring water bring it to a boil and then cool it down to 120 degrees you never want your chaga to get over 125 degrees or it starts losing its vital nutrients so you can use a candy thermometer or just kind of get to know to the touch 125 degrees if you can stick your finger in there and it doesn't hurt it's probably okay for you to steep your chaga Steep your chaga for at least 10 minutes, but the longer, the, the stronger it's obviously going to be. You can also let it cool and use it um, as iced tea, or you can um, put it into smoothies. You can also use your leftover chaga um, several times. I use it in the same decanter over and over until it's pretty much clear. And then I actually keep the grounds and put it into um, my smoothies or you can put it in your compost pit don't waste any of the chaga it is a very great uh, fungus and you don't want to waste any of it i hope you've enjoyed this video